Hi guys, this is Emil, and we are back for the fifth episode of our playthrough tutorial slash thing. Uh, now, uh, we'll have to wait a moment before we can go to war, sadly. Unless this finishes first. I was considering getting my troops there, as I mentioned, and trying to save them, but it definitely seems like it will be faster for Syracuse to fall. So, and well, much easier, definitely. Not sure why AI decided to just sit here. Uh, from earlier, they usually, from my experiences earlier, they've been doing okay-ish. Uh, but this is quite ridiculous, so, oh well. Is their own fault? I'm not, I'm not to blame, I'm uh, pretty sure. Why, why this outpausing isn't working for me? Let's go. Let's try to uh, try to uh, well, either make a friend out of one of our guys or make an impression. Uh, we are going to give up some of the religious power. My pulse button isn't working. What's up with that? Huh. Okay, that's annoying. Let's see. Um, Military tech investments. Uh, I think we'll just get this on power. Come on, space. What are, what are you up to? Uh, which is annoying because we won't be able to get rid of this, I don't think. Uh, no abortion for this fort, sadly. Oh no. Okay, benefits of power again, it's not looking good. Are you falling yet? Nope. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Child was born. Everyone likes God. Uh, Okay, I mean, we'll try, but I don't think it has any chance of working. It's not our goal again, I think I, I explained that earlier. Conflict of Orders, of the Orders. In spite of the rights granted by the two plebeians since the last session in uh, Fort uh, 411, tensions between the patrician and plebeian classes of Rome uh, has been, have been growing lately, partially influenced by the work of Gnius Flavius, among others. None of uh, our cons uh, oh, none of our concessions have dampened the plebeian determination to secure political and legal equality. However, a new political class made up of both patricians and plebeians has been growing, incorporating the middle-income families of the Republic. We must decide uh, whether to promote the expansion of the new nobilitas or a middle ground to give uh, into the populist demands for reform. Okay, so this is like, uh, uh, I like most of the game, but this irks me that populist factions, faction is um, for the most part, to so say, you know, a few, few small things, uh, very much a boogeyman. So it's uh, basically uh, end of the Republic, beginning of the uh, of the Principate uh, sources taken verbatim, right? Like uh, without, like if, if if you were to throw out hundred years of historical analysis out of the window, you would get uh, uh, this reading of history, which is a bit annoying. But well, here we are. Uh, so uh, historically, the, the the first choice was yeah, let's let's try to incorporate some new people, uh, yada yada, yada and that, that that led and uh, let's fight uh, plebeians and politicians that. Uh, support plebeians to the nail. Uh, of course, like, those are also plebeians, those those middle classes, because uh, whoever is not a patrician by birth is a plebeian. So this is like a bit muddled in here, but uh, tangent. So um, what can we get? Uh, national freedom and happiness, national manpower, um, promotion costs so we can we could probably promote them to citizens if we wanted to 
Oh, we can get uh, this, which is National Freedom and Happiness, uh, Populist Faction Influence, uh, National Unrest, National... Yeah, uh, hmm. I've said it is integration. Okay, so institutional extortensia, so one of the... Uh, one of the loss. Let's see what would we lose if we were to pick that integration loss. So now we have national citizen happiness. Which is actually quite important because that pushes us over 50% in quite a few places. But instead we can get national human happiness and uh, national unrest, which I think is significantly better. So would uh, like not, not better enough to uh, to save, uh, uh, to, to warrant 250 points, but, uh, definitely better. We'll get to, to, to a high citizen happiness soon enough with our increasing civilization and there will be quite a few, uh, quite a few inventions that, that grant us. So, uh, yeah, and I think we can survive with the, uh, 0.25%, uh, uh, the populist faction support. So, yeah, definitely. Let's support the populists. As we should. Yeah, but I'm afraid we are not gonna get... Uh, yeah, spent. Hmm. Okay, we still cannot declare this war without uh, sacrificing. Ah, okay. Let's try again. I really, really, really don't want that tyranny, and you really should should avoid trying, uh, avoid getting that. Now, uh, since we are here, let's take a look at uh, those things around. So, uh, no one says you. It's not said anywhere, but if you sack someone, their loyalty will go by twenty percent. So keep that in mind. Uh, like if it is worth to to to, to switch people around. Uh, for like a single point if they are someone important, uh, like a general or someone. Mm. So this guy, for example, he is middling and he's only seven. Uh, we can get uh, someone that is nine and is uh, decent enough. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, th I think we in this case we will uh, do the switch. Oh, but, uh, if we look here, so there is some uh, uh, something to consider. Uh, as you can see, the reasons why people are voting for this guy above uh, others. So uh, people from his faction will vote for him, and yada yada yada. But uh, the rest is mostly to, due to popularity, prominence, and uh, uh, and uh, as you can see, in some places, uh, friendship with the faction leader and whatnot. So uh, uh, you you get prominence mostly by uh, being uh, being in office, governor, general, and uh, or one of those eight. So uh, sometimes it may be wise to pick someone uh, if you get like a young uh, person, okay, like this guy, thirty three years old, and a good start across the board. So putting him uh, uh, in one of like a proper offices here would. Uh, make it very likely that his prominent uh, would well increase his prominence and will make it very likely that he will be uh, chosen as a consul at some point once uh, he rises and that would be a great idea if not for a fact that he is bloody crafty which increases his uh, uh, his corruption which is bad because when you rule as corruption it increases all power costs across the board so I don't think I want this guy to 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 make the greatest of careers. Sadly, uh, none of those are all that amazing. Like the the thing we are looking for the most is higher oratory skill and you know decent others. <sighs> but you know what? Uh, this guy is. Uh, Okay, I mean, he will die soon enough, so... But do we care about aggressive expansion that much? You know what, let's let's try. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can get like a, a two military candidates switching one another, because... 
on others. Okay, we have the name here, but we don't have. We would have to. Lucius Papyrus Cursor is is the next one in line. Which one is it? Let's see. Characters. Uh, yeah, as you can see, a bit of a mess. Okay, maybe Lucius Papyrus Cursor. Oh, let's, let's look for the families. Uh, this guy, right? Um, so, oh, he's a, he's our researcher. Oh, he's, he's actually good. Okay, so we don't, like, uh, if we were to get a second guy from uh, the, the, the military faction, uh, instead of like one, one apiece, this guy would be, would be actually pretty damn great. Uh, so we, could uh, suck him as a research and put him uh, on a different job, but he's also 64, so that won't take long. Uh, he's a gambler, but that actually helps his prominence. <laughs> and he wants to be a governor, which I mean, he would be a decent one. Okay, yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Let's uh, let's see if we can get uh, get him elected. So, uh, we want uh, who do we want to be our researcher? Uh, someone fairly useless. You are useless. Perfect. And uh, and 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 we want to put him in charge of something. What do you have? Uh, okay, okay, you have nine oratory powers, so we can uh, we can actually put you here instead of. Uh, this guy. There we go. So uh, he should uh, be getting more prominence and whatnot, and uh, um, perhaps uh, jump ahead of this Magellus guy here, which uh, who is yeah, kind of. Uh. Anyway, uh, where were we? Okay, we yeah. should probably unpause. Hold on. Hopefully, this wall will finish, and we will become a friend with that populist guy, Flavius. Oh, what's his name again? Uh, Gnaeus Flavius, yes. We do have some scorned families, but uh, we don't care for now uh, about it quite yet. Okay, so this is alright. Once again, we will burn religious power for it. Mm, speaking of religious power, we need 300 to, to, to boost stability. About 260. Why? Um, Should be 300. Uh, probably. Oh, exotic gifts, that's good. So, yeah, she gives him cash. And then one more that is in the bloody tyranny. And we could. This war should actually end in a second, right? Come on, lose the war. You're not a war leader, right? Yeah, so. Just peace out. Yeah, this this fault finished. Sad days. Uh, which probably means we need to put this guy here. Mm, hopefully we are not getting... Uh... Oh! Bloody hell. Uh, no, I can't. I, I can't. Like, there's no point in getting this tyranny again. Okay. We just need this war to finish and it would be good. Besieged everything. I mean, look at let's look at this. And war minus twenty. Why are we minus twenty six? Ah, uh, it's because uh, we are at war. Yeah. Okay. Can you can everybody peace out? Like white peace. And yes, again we got spoon back now. So this is pretty annoying. It's very much luck based. So once again, let's try to be bloody friendly. Uh, hmm, I don't think we can... Uh, they're being... Okay, so they actually landed some troops here. Okay, let's put some of our troops on the boats and see, maybe we can actually help them. Uh, that doesn't seem likely. Uh, yeah, 10 guy. Why is the yeah? 
Not looking good at all. Oh, we can. This is weird, like, I, I had these bugs sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that they have a proper action against their shitty one. But that's not gonna help. Again, impression. Once again, religious power. Yeah, I mean, we could, we could have won that AT. So, let's pause and let's get a leader of some sort. Nine is okay. More of armies, so they have to gain chance. Uh, yeah, so. Hmm. It's quite loyal. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, we'll deal with the loyalty issues later on. Okay, well, actually, that's if we were to um, use the, the the whole landing thing. Why would, would we want to land? Like, uh, it's a problem with those pirates. We don't want to 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 fight pirates with troops on board. That may end up being deadly. So we, get, we should probably land right here. So let's just... Mm. Okay, let's, let's give it a go. That's pretty bloody risky. Do we have four, two, two? And this war so is an ending, it seems. How is the white piece? They aren't offering anything. The gladiator. Uh, small, moderate. Yeah, will this popularity and civic power? This is getting expensive. Hmm. Okay, you are going here without any. Uh, you, you're you gonna get stuck by aren't you? Hmm, okay, so this guy, uh, he's an Argo. We could put him there? Yeah, we just put him there. Uh, I discover helping himself the sizable quantity of gold from National Treasury. Oh, Jesus. Uh, have him flogged. Uh, will gain popularity, he will lose health, and will lose some cash. Oh, we. Uh, we can befriend him. Mm. What's his name? Elvio Vulerentio. Uh, yeah, let's just flog him. Whatever. He, sh he should regain his health soon enough. Let's go. There's no port here, right? So uh, it's all proposed landings. There's the board. Mm, yeah, I don't see that working out. Yeah, that, that's a stack wipe. <sighs> okay, let's check again this, this bloody white piece here. Can can we actually? Uh, we cannot give up anything that is not ours, right? Yes, is it like Earth? We need to wait for um, Cecilia to to. Uh, and we want to reset. Our, we are offering peace. And give them cash. Uh, nope. Hmm. Not looking good. And, I mean, if we had 12k here, we, we could do it, but no, that's, that's, that's just suicide. Well, I guess 
Let's experience together the problems. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> I'm starting to think this was, we should have taken that in the first place, but no, that, that, that's going to be bad. And it, it will take us, what, 3%, uh, so that's, no, no. <laughs> 100, that it will 12 years to, to, to get rid of this tyranny. Uh, and we will need to, 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 to get, uh, get some tyranny later on. So let's try this. Oh, we cannot already be friending. No, we are not. Oh, right, because it's, it hasn't failed yet. Oh. Okay, so they are sending 7k more. Uh, we can actually support that bonding, I think. Election soon. Ah, uh, we wanted to. Um, Magnaeus, okay. Uh, it will be actually pretty difficult to declare that war after the election either. That's before we. Uh, no. No. Is there anyone we can actually declare war on around here? Maybe due to some. Nope. Which is, okay, this is kind of silly because historically, Roman Senate, we voted against the war twice. And I think in both, uh, I don't remember which was the second one, but the first one was the first Punic War. So they, uh, they, they voted against it, but they, they then they like look around at themselves and voted again and they voted for it. So uh, the fact that you cannot declare war as Rome is, is pretty ridiculous, but oh well, I mean balancing issues and whatnot, but, <laughs> you know, small things. Um, okay, You're, where are we going with it? Let's, let's follow you. Uh, right, so on pause, I need to restart it after. Mm. See, let's get military tech investment. Why not? It's not worth much, but it's some. I'm sure, whatever. Pause. All right. So we do have a, a new consul. He's decent. Uh, he's not corrupt. He is not corrupt. Good. So, can we declare a bloody war now, please? No. Or hasn't updated yet? Has updated. So, friend of a uh, friend of a faction leader does plus twenty-five. Um, a ruler friend in faction with at least eighty prominence. Hmm. So it, it's best to. Um, is there anything like uh, anything else that we could change? Cool. So we could increase our popularity. Uh, that would help. Uh, it's difficult to do like on the go without. Uh... Actually, yeah, we could hold games. That would, uh, yeah, that would give us across that. It wouldn't help for the previous guy, but for this guy, it would. It will because he, he was like in in low fifties, I think. So that would help. Yep. Yeah. That that actually did it. Mm, okay, now <laughs> let's see if that the, the, the situation here changed at all. So, by Sentia and Connor. Uh, okay, and you? Oh, you have no allies at all. Uh, yeah, but now we can declare war across the board. Are you allied at all? No, so all those three. Which I think we would want to declare both wars at the same time, actually, because, uh, well, it would be easier to, to get to those guys through here anyway, sort of. Mm, actually, no, this, this fault actually changed it. Mm. All right. Uh, how much, uh, okay, let's see how much supply. So I'm not sure if we like went uh, through the supply map mode correctly. So this is how it looks uh, if you don't have anything selected, but if you select an army, 
It will show you where it's alright, where it's not alright, so and where it's on the edge. So as you can see here, with an army of nine cohorts with uh, three heavy infantry and whatnot, we can go in most places. Let's move here. If you wanted to see how it's calculated, it's here, but I think we touched upon it. Uh, let's go. And uh, that also means, I think, we can cancel this whole expedition. Expedition, because we don't care. They only put 4k here, so yeah. I mean, hmm. I mean okay, let's, let's wait with this for now. I think we, we have enough. Uh, let's see, you have 4k, 8k. Uh, oh, you have. Okay. It, oh no, never mind. It's not you because the, the, those are tribals, so they have, they have more troops usually. Yeah, I think we we good. They have some manpower, some treasury, but yeah, should be all right. Uh, let's see the levels of the forts though. This is level one. This is level one. This is level one. Level one. Oh, level two here. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, this this war with those four seems, seems reasonable. Uh, hopefully, most of the fighting will be done by, by our allies. This is our ally. Yes, it is. So, um, I actually want to attack those guys uh, from here. I think so. Yeah, let's let's quickly move those uh, there because they may. Uh, in not funding their troops, which would allow us to stack up easily. Now, we lost the sensor because he became uh, our consul. Let's see, who do we want to try to support? So, uh, the military faction guy will not uh, will not do it. So, this guy is the next guy. He's okay. Uh, what are his, his prominence? So, oh, he will cut our commerce in camp, like Hard. Not ideal. Well, what are yours? So, local fort defense for the provinces you are given. And those can was income. That's pretty good. Uh, decent enough. Uh, but, uh, oh, uh, the, the, this guy cannot be uh, a consul for the next 10 years. So, um, let's see. Um, next one in line is Flavius, which we don't want. Don't want. It's not. So I think we want uh, uh, we want uh, this guy. Uh, can we actually put him here? What would be optimal? I don't remember. Like some. No, no, we cannot. Mm, so basically, we want to put someone from the uh, mercantile faction. Yeah, I think like mercantile faction is wouldn't be. Bad. I mean, Owen Power and Conversion Pop is good too, but we don't want to use Conversion Pop quite yet. We want to increase our stability first. So, I mean, really, not a single person from the Mercantile faction is available for the job. Wow. We have a. Uh... Okay, so we could like remove you from here. Yeah, that's actually not a terrible idea. You want to be an Argo, what does that entail? Huh. Uh, yeah, I think we can find a better uh, guy for this. Mm, yeah, yeah, you work, and now we will be able to put that guy as a uh, as our sensor. So, but all it does this doesn't provide so. The fact that we've taken like low, lower uh, oration, uh, or lower charisma guy, all it does is that the influence of this faction will be growing uh, more slowly. Also, if we are not really, really want, we could uh, support uh, a fac endorse a faction to 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 increase the, the the power here, but that's once again five tyranny. But it is. Uh, like if you have no other way of uh, you know being able to start a war, for example, it's cheaper to do it this way. Basically, you'll you'll give them more seats than the ones that that support this this endeavor the most, and uh, this way you you can uh, you know get get few war declarations for the price of one. Omens uh, definitely still going for the population growth. 
Mm. Okay, so we'll just wait for those guys to arrive there so we can strike. Uh, yeah, I think this is... that would be fairly suicidal in here. Uh, oh, wait. Peace. Okay, well, I don't care. Uh, I'm, okay, why aren't you moving there? And please land in some port so I don't forget about you. Actually, here would be best. And what is this? Uh, tribal proposition. Uh, our tribal negotiator Apulia has started investigating a lot of the uh, treasury, investing, not investigating, a lot of the treasure into opening up the borders between our two nations. Hopefully, this will prove beneficial for us and uh, uh, us as well. And though the tribes are somewhat more unruly than we are used to. So basically they are a tribal something. Settled tribe, I imagine. Settled tribe, yep. Uh, so we can get some cash. They will like us more. Uh, Canassium will get local tax for 10 years, but also unrest. Uh, yeah, sure. Canassium is, I imagine, like a single bloody province or something. Uh, yeah, a single city. So, right here. Yeah, sure. It's like non, non issue here. Okay, we are losing manpower here. Uh, we want to land right here. Oh, th those are province capitals, right? If someone is wondering. I think we covered it when we are conquering around here. <laughs> yeah, so basically we are gonna start the wars and hopefully uh, we there won't be joined by 10 different factions, uh, 10 different small nations, so fingers crossed, but uh, I think we are in a position to deal with that too. Oh, so, uh, well, we'll finish this episode by starting the war. But before we do, let's talk quickly about uh, uh, about uh, loyalty of the troops. So, uh, if, you if you remember, when we were assigning this guy, I was worried about worried about loyalty gain chance. Loyalty sounds good, but sadly, this is loyalty of the troops to him personally, not uh, uh, not to the state. So, the problems with loyal troops are numerous. First of all, you cannot disband them. Uh, you cannot uh, assign them uh, to remove them from the uh, from the command of this guy. You can uh, remove. So, for example, here we uh, we do have uh, a loyal cohort. It's, this cohort is uh, loyal to Marcus Fulvius Corvus, which is this guy, and uh, he is still loyal to us. So he would be. Uh, we would be able to remove him from the, the the command of this army if not for the fact that he was recently only recently assigned to it. Um, but the the problem is uh, that uh, well if uh, if it gets worse if he becomes disloyal and whatnot uh, uh, that may start as a civil war. Also, it's uh, the the more loyal troops troops he has the lower uh, his loyalty will be. So a single loyal cohort is minus uh, 0.02, but I had situations where there were 20 loyal cohorts. Uh, it's it's more common for the, well, much more common for the tribes, but it, it may become a problem. So so keeping the loyalty of your or your generals pretty high uh, is, is is important. So this guy, uh, for example, if we will fight a little bit and his the cohorts under his command will become loyal to him, uh, that uh, that will, as you can see, that uh, positive uh, that gain of loyalty will uh, quickly become a loss, and eventually he will dip under thirty three percent. That will cross that bridge when we get to it. I uh, think we we'll like this. This is a bit of a shitty army. We kind of messed up our our setups and whatnot. Um, but I think we'll just go. Hmm, they want. I mean, they they do like that they're skirmishing, but but I think bottleneck is okay. What do they have? Okay, yeah, that they would actually go skirmishing, right? Because that's. Light troops and 
Mm. Let's see, this is uh, archers, light infantry. This is light cavalry, horse archers, chariots, yada yada yada. So actually we are gonna go this and how they are going gonna go skirmishing. So we'll go with deception. Here uh, it's archers and heavy cav actually. Uh, so they may actually go shock. And here, what do they have? Uh, we we'll once again go deception, I think. Uh, and let's end before we uh, do that. Let's take a look here. Uh, sadly, once again, there's nothing we can uh, we can get. So uh, nothing changed. Okay, so you are Ancona and Sabina. Oh, okay, so that actually will be a single war, I do think. Yeah, okay, so we can just declare on those guys. And we want, let's see, what we want. Uh, Pisenium or Etruria? Uh, Pisenium here and Etruria, it's going to be. What parts of Etruria do they have? Oh, it's this, isn't it? Yeah. So this single province. And this. Okay, so two forts. Oh, uh, basically, it will be cheaper for us to uh, take... Uh, yeah, we'll go for this because, I mean, we will win this anyway, right? Right? So... Uh, we will. It will be cheaper for us, uh, point-wise, to, to attack this, and we do want to comp to fully annex them. So uh, it's it's better safe than sorry, because I'm not uh, actually quite sure. Like, how do you you know? It's more expensive to get uh, to wargle-wise uh, warp. What is it again? Let's see. Uh, war score wise, it's more expensive to take subject nations. Uh, it's more expensive, for, actually, v much more expensive when you are doing no CB war, uh, like show superiority. But I'm not like 100% sure how it works with uh, nations uh, from defensive leagues and whatnot. And so let's just uh, make sure we take a bigger one as a goal. And there we go. We set out set orders. Uh, there's the attacks, and you can go and besiege that and attacks here. And I mean, they don't have a lot of troops, so it may be possible for us to uh, just besiege all the all the fortresses we see here, and then uh, and uh, hope for support from our. Uh, from our allies rather than with our troops uh, as we did against the Truria itself. So, uh, everyone joined the war, everyone joined the war. Perfect. Uh, I mean, on this side, they, they have to. So, uh, we are going to continue this uh, finally started fight in the next episode. But I think this is like an important uh, bit, the, the, the thing about uh, you know, getting a senate to 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 approve thing because I I, I think a lot of people will uh, struggle with it and they will not click this and they will have no idea how to make uh, your senate actually support this. We were very unlucky with the, the attempts to 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 befriend that guy, but well, what can you do? Uh, how is this going? I mean, I think like within five years, so. It may be wise to plan ahead, right? So if you like, if you want, if you see that a military guy will win, which was predetermined, he was ways ahead. You may want to already at the start of of the previous term, for example, to put a guy from mercant from mercantile faction as a sensor to start working on the the uh, the support for uh, for that faction. But we shall see. Uh, Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Cheers!